ashver.com. Hello, welcome to ashver.com. You are watching an interesting video about short term fasting can make chemotherapy safer and more effective. Please read the disclaimer carefully. How does fasting in conjunction with chemotherapy protect healthy cells and destroy cancer cells? Chemotherapy destroys healthy cells along with cancer cells. Side effects are caused by the destruction of these healthy cells. For example, neuropathy results when healthy nerve cells are destroyed causing the sheath, causing the sheath of the protective covering to degenerate. This results in feelings of numbness, tingling, pain, and often affects coordination and balance. This is a significant problem for many cancer patients undergoing chemotherapy. Fasting appears to naturally slow the growth of healthy cells by causing the body to send instructions to cells to slow down and consume less energy. In effect, normal cells in the body go into maintenance mode, much like an animal in hibernation. Cancerous cells typically ignore instructions from the body, which is why they are cancerous, and therefore are not affected by fasting. Thus, fasting during chemotherapy reduces the absorption of harmful drugs by the healthy cells by slowing down their growth, while the cancer cells continue to grow unabated. This has the obvious effect of reducing the negative side effects without impacting the effectiveness of the treatment. If the healthy cell are protected higher and the more frequent doses of chemotherapy can be given to patients resulting in a more effective treatment for some patients. Thus, advanced or more aggressive cancers may be safely treated without increasing the risk of side effects of the chemo. 1. 1. Study with mice. In 2008 Volta Lungo conducted a study on mice to test this theory. The results were published in the science journal Science Translational Medicine. One of the many interesting results was that five of the eight cancers tested responded to fasting alone. Normal small cells in the body obey instructions to reduce growth when in a fasting state. However, cancer cells do not recognize the instructions, and continue to attempt to grow and divide even without the required nutrients in the blood, in some cases resulting in self-destruction. However, the combination of fasting and chemotherapy was either more or much more effective than the chemotherapy or fasting alone. In all cases there was a slow tumor growth and or a reduction of the spread of cancer to other organs. For example, multiple cycles of fasting combined with chemotherapy were used to treat a very aggressive form of cancer that is common in children. The combination of fasting and chemotherapy cured 20% of the mice although the cancer had spread. 40% of the mice were cured in cases where the cancer had not spread. The interesting thing about these results were that none of the mice survived that were treated with chemotherapy alone. Lungo, v. 2012. Fasting cycles retard growth of tumors and sensitize a range of cancer cell types to chemotherapy. Science Translational 2. Small Study with Humans In 2010 a case report published in the journal Aging involved 10 individuals going through treatment for breast, ovarian, lung, and several other types of cancer, the patients fasted for periods ranging from 48 to 140 hours before as before, and 556 hours following chemotherapy. None of the patients had adverse effects from the fasting, other than the expected hunger and lightheadedness. Six of the patients went through therapy both with and without fasting for different cycles. Uniformly, the patients reported fewer to no negative side effects of the chemo while fasting. For example, one breast cancer patient felt so bad after second and third treatments, without fasting, that she had to stop working. When she resumed fasting for her fourth cycle, she reported feeling much better, even though each cycle of treatment typically causes the effects to get worse due to cumulative toxicity. This response was typical for all the patients undergoing 3. Self-reported results Many people on forums expressed positive results with the fasting. For example, 
A man in his 80s said he had been so tired during his first sessions that he could barely get out of bed. When he tried fasting, he felt so much better that he was he was able to play an entire game of golf and went from being a very cranky person to feeling much happier. One woman going through breast cancer fasted for the first two treatments but not for the third. After the third one she had headaches, much more fatigue, and felt nauseous. She immediately resumed fasting, and felt much better for the remainder of her treatment. Current Clinical Trials Several clinical trials are currently being performed at multiple cancer centers and research hospitals. Particularly notable is the Mayo Clinic trial running from 2010 to 2015. Another important study is now being done at the USC Norris Comprehensive Cancer Cancer Center. The treatments being studied are for breast, urinary tract, and ovarian cancer. An initial phase has been completed, although it was merely to verify that patients can tolerate a three-day short-term fast of two days before and one day after treatment. Dangers of fasting during chemotherapy in certain cases there may be risks associated with fasting during chemotherapy, so always check with your doctor before making your own decision. For example, fasting can be dangerous to patients with diabetes, who have experienced significant weight loss due, due to illness, are on medication that must be taken with food, or are at risk of low blood pressure. My personal experience While I was going through chemotherapy, the only resources I could find were the study with mice, the informal subjective 10 patient human study, and self-reported results on forums. Furthermore, I didn't find any of this information until after my first round of chemotherapy. My first round of chemotherapy. When I asked my oncologist for information about the study she brushed me off and told me to contact the Nutrition Counseling Center, although she did acknowledge that she didn't see any dangers of fasting other than predicting even more discomfort than chemo normally causes. The center responded as if I was crazy, and simply told me to drink a lot of milkshakes and other high-calorie foods to maintain my weight, in spite of the fact that I maintained a healthy weight through my entire treatment. Based upon the available information, and since I did not fall into any of the high-risk categories for fasting, I made the decision to try it. During my treatment, my oncologist did not ask about my diet at any point. Furthermore, I did not have any significant weight loss due to the anti-nausea drugs and steroids, rather, they made me eat like a football player, and I had frequent blood tests. I fasted two days before, the day of chemotherapy, and at least 24 hours after. I'm not a person that had ever fasted before, and cannot bear it during my normal life but I was so desperate to minimize any permanent damage, such as neuropathy, that I was able to force myself through it. There are many people that took the same drugs who are now using a cane or a wheelchair for life due to permanent neuropathy. Neuropathy. In fact, since it was so common, my oncologist routinely asked how my neuropathy was, despite the fact that I kept telling her I didn't have it at all. Since I discovered this study only after the first round of chemotherapy, I initially experienced mouth sores, exhaustion, and weakness such that I could barely walk the next morning because my legs were shaking and so unsteady. After I began fasting during later sessions, I didn't experience mouth sores, generally had less fatigue, and never got a trace of neuropathy. I did experience hair loss and some fatigue, but no other side effects. In hindsight I think my emotional state may have strongly contributed to my fatigue because I was never so tired that I needed a nap. The current studies need to address whether fasting does in fact reduce side effects in humans, how long an individual needs to fast, and what types of cancer fasting fasting is effective for. It is also vital to prove that fasting does not negatively affect the effectiveness of the treatment, so that people will feel more free to try it even in the absence of proven positive results. Also, some research is being done to develop drugs that will put cells into a fasting-like maintenance mode so people who otherwise could not tolerate fasting could still benefit from the Thank you for watching this video. This channel offers motivational, inspirational, 
valuable and informative videos to soothe, cleanse and inspire your health, mind, body and spirit. You can find lot of interesting videos on wide range of topics here, stay tuned and keep watching.